This is one of our most popular models, the SGA series ozone generator. As you see here, it's mounted on a skid system, but can be mounted separately on a wall type configuration. This generator is very simple. It only requires two things. Number one is compressed air, six standard cubic feet per minute at 30 psi. The second requirement is electrical power, 220 to 240 volts at 30 amps. I would like to introduce to you the major components of the SGA series ozone generator. Here we have the two oxygen concentrators. Down below here we have the ozone generator reactor cell. Above it the high voltage power supply. This is the high voltage power supply controller. Continuing on with the major components. We have the solenoid which controls the air supply input. Up here we have the electrical interface that allows us to control the ozone generator either locally or remotely by way of a PLC. I would now like to show you the control panel. The control panel is very simple. It consists of five major components. The first is the oxygen flow control. This is where we control the oxygen feed gas flow to the ozone generator reactor cell. Next we have the reactor cell pressure gauge. This shows us our reactor pressure present at the reactor. The third gauge is our air supply gauge. This shows us how much compressed air pressure we have available for the ozone generator. Finally, we have our manual control knob. We're able to control the output of the ozone generator electrically by turning this knob from 0 to 100 percent for local control. And then finally, we have an electrical gauge that shows us how much voltage is present at the ozone generator reactor. And of course, the amount of ozone present is what gives us the ozone concentration that we need. I'm now going to talk about the pneumatic system of the ozone generator. We begin on this end with compressed air. Compressed air is brought in through this filter and then from this filter we adjust the compressed air pressure with this regulator to 30 to 35 psi. From there the compressed air travels to the compressed air solenoid. The job of the solenoid is to prevent compressed air from entering the oxygen concentrators when the ozone generator is powered down. It's very important that we do not pressurize the oxygen concentrators when they do not have electrical power available. When the ozone generator is switched on, this solenoid opens, allowing the compressed air to be distributed through this T to the two oxygen concentrators. Both oxygen concentrators are mounted in parallel, so they both see the same amount of compressed air the oxygen concentrators then remove the water vapor and nitrogen in the air, leaving at the base pure oxygen. The oxygen is approximately 90 to 95 percent pure and extremely dry, a dew point of about minus 80 degrees centigrade. From here, as you can see, both oxygen concentrators have an exit port. The oxygen exits through check valves then travels to a T so that the oxygen output is now common to one source. From this point, the oxygen travels up through to the flow switch and the flow meter. Let me show you what the other side of the flow meter looks like. The oxygen begins by entering at the base of the flow meter. The oxygen then drives the ball up so that we have an indication of how much oxygen is flowing, we can adjust it according to the needs of the particular ozone generator. From this point, the oxygen leaves the flow meter, and then we go, we go inside again, and we follow the path where the oxygen comes down all the way through this piping and enters the ozone generator reactor cell. It's here where the oxygen is converted to ozone. At the bottom of the reactor cell, the ozone is then extracted and then brought through a needle valve and then out through a bulkhead and then to the application. 
just to show how easy it is to control this on the electrical side of things, we start first of all with a manual control control knob. If we want 100% ozone, we'll turn the knob to 100%. If we want 50%, we'll turn it to half. From here, the control knob signal is then delivered to the high voltage power supply controller. It's here where we take the mains electrical voltage, whether it be 115 or 230 volts, and then regulate it to the high voltage power supply. The high voltage power supply then takes that varying AC voltage and sends a high voltage varying AC to the reactor cell. So we're simply taking a control knob signal on the control panel and ultimately converting it to a high voltage signal to our reactor cell. I'm going to now demonstrate how easy it is to start and operate the SGA series ozone generator. We start by connecting compressed air here. The next thing we do is turn on the power with a power switch. At this point we can then adjust our compressed air supply using the air supply gauge. We rotate the compressed air regulator clockwise until we see approximately 30 to 35 psi of compressed air on our air supply gauge. It's at that point we're ready to start setting our oxygen flow. We then open the needle valve on the bottom and at the same time we begin to open the flow control on our oxygen flow meter. We will then adjust both of these until we get the desired oxygen flow and the desired reactor pressure. It's at this time we are ready to begin generating ozone. All we need to do now is adjust our ozone output by adjusting our control knob from 0 to 100%. We are now generating ozone.